Good morning, everyone. So just a few housekeeping rules before we go ahead and get started this morning. So thank you all for coming and joining us and braving the rain outside. Whenever we start music again, you're going to hear Pomp and Circumstance start at the end before the stage party comes in. At that point, when you hear that music, everyone, please rise. Graduates, please make sure that the index card that was on your seat, that you bring that to the stage with you. That's how the provost will know to read your name. After you walk across the stage, you're going to come off on this end. You're going to go out those first set of double doors. Rebecca, wave your hand. So where Rebecca is, when you go out those doors, you're going to have your professional photo made with your diploma cover. Then you're going to come in the second set of doors where Jordan is. So straight down the hallway, back in those doors. You'll cut across the gym and back up to your chair. Make sure everyone has their gown zipped whenever the ceremony starts. At the end, when you are recessing out of the gym, you, some of you are going to go out this side door, some of you are going to go out the back door. Our marshals will lead you out, so you don't have to worry about which way you're going. But once you do go out into the hallways, please keep moving so that we don't congregate, so that we can get all the graduates recessed out, okay? Perfect. Guests, while the ceremony is going on, please do not come down on the floor. And at the end, whenever you are excused to leave, you may come onto the floor at that point after the graduates have exited, and you can go out any of the side doors on either side or out the back. You can also go around the top go out the front of the Innovation Center or back to the elevator if you used it coming in. So thank you all so much and we will get started promptly at 10 a.m.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Marty Roth. I'm the president here at the University of Charleston, and it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you, our graduates, families, friends, our faculty, staff, deans, program directors, board of trustees, everybody who is here to do one thing today, celebrate the accomplishments of our most recent graduates from the University of Charleston. I invite you right now to please stay standing and direct your attention to the stage as well as to the video screens for an invocation that will be delivered by Pastor John King, followed by UC Superfan and Team Mom, Amy Osborne, who will perform our national anthem. John, would you please join me at the podium? Good morning. Congratulations. Can we pray together? God, we acknowledge your presence here today, and we pause and say thank you for the moments of celebration of accomplishment in our lives. Thank you for creating us for good things and giving us the ability to enjoy good things. For all those who have played a role in this moment in the life of these graduates, we th say thank you. For the parents who have encouraged, sacrificed, supported, agonized, cried for them and laughed with them, we say we are grateful for their presence and for your working in their lives. For the faculty and staff who pushed and held accountable and cared for and sweat over, we say thank you for the strength you have given them to fulfill such a wonderfully important role in our society. For the many, many family members, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandparents, nieces, nephews, sons and daughters who have come alongside in support, we say thank you for their presence in our lives for the many coaches who have spent the past several years shaping not just athletic talent, but also character, discipline, responsibility, and resolve. May those lessons have lasting impact in these lives, and may the relationships flourish for years to come. May this moment in the life of the graduates be a moment that represents both an ending and a beginning. We praise you for the strength you would get, have given each of them to accomplish this goal and for the many memories, both successes and failures, that have brought them to this moment. We pray that this beginning would be a moment they look back on with fondness. We pray that you would fill them with hope and strength as they head into a world that is increasingly difficult to navigate. We pray they would be people known for their love of others, that wherever life takes them, they would be light in the dark places, that cities would be different and flourish due to their presence that the gifts and passions you have given to them would be used for the lifting up of those around them, that you would protect them, sustain them, and uphold them with your mighty hand, that they would know you and your presence with them as they seek to place their mark on the world. With much gratitude for who you are and for what you do, we come in the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave.
Everybody can please be seated. Amy and John, thank you so much for being part of this special day for our students and their families. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times. Your years here at UC have been beyond interesting. During your time with us, you've learned how to manage through a global pandemic, economic volatility, social tensions, and now, unfortunately, a war in Ukraine, which ultimately is not that far away. But through it all, you stayed focused on achieving your goal, to graduate with your well-earned degree. I'm going to ask you to briefly reflect on three things that you experienced during your journey here at the University of Charleston. Behind you are our outstanding faculty. With them, you have expanded your boundaries. You know more about things like how the human body works, how to make organizations operate more effectively, how to influence people, and how to make our world a better, cleaner, and safer place to live. You now know many things that will positively shape how you live and how you will be able to positively impact others as a result of expanding your boundaries. Also here today are many coaches, advisors, and staff who have pushed you to pursue excellence. Being good is good, but being good is a minimum expectation in today's world. Those to whom we look up to and to whom we aspire to be have found ways to rise above good. Excellence occurs through commitment hard work, perseverance, and teamwork. But excellence also requires setting goals, ambitious goals that give us the direction and focus that we need to excel. Continuing to pursue excellence will serve you well, no matter what type of jobs you seek, the organizations you want to join, or what positions you desire to attain. And also, think about the people that you see here on the stage today. Of course, they all have a deep tie to the University of Charleston and are excited to celebrate this moment with you. But why are they on the stage? What they have in common is their passion for leadership. We have deans and provosts who are deeply committed to student success. We have members of our board of trustees who earned the privilege due to their transformational leadership, their ability to manage organizations, their commitment to their employees, and their contributions to their communities. Both in the classroom and out, you have all had many opportunities to learn about the qualities of successful leaders to develop your own leadership skills, and in so doing, to gain the confidence needed to be a positive agent of change. Our world desperately needs more effective leaders, and you have the power to be just that. So I encourage you to build on the experiences that you have had here at UC continue to expand your boundaries, continue to pursue excellence, and continue to live a life of leadership. Doing so will build on the momentum that has brought you to this day and clear your path to personal and professional success. Each year, our faculty nominate many students for our Outstanding Student Award. This year was no exception. The committee had a very, very challenging task, ultimately selecting Meredith Suttle, who will be receiving both Bachelors of Arts in Integrated Communications 
and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degrees today. Meredith, will you please join me at the podium and share your reflections as a UC student with us. Well, I must say, this is a much larger audience than my public speaking classes. <laughs> Good morning, President Roth, Board of Trustee members, presidential cabinet members, faculty, staff, family and friends, and the graduating class of 2022. It is with great honor and pleasure that I stand before each of you today to, to speak on behalf of the graduating class representing my commencement address from a student's perspective. By way of introduction, my name is Meredith Suttle. I am a West Virginia native, and after today will be a third generation University of Charleston graduate. Yes, you heard that correctly. I am preceded by my grandfather, father, mother, brother, and if you're counting, also my aunt. However, I did not choose the University of Charleston because those that preceded me influenced me to do so, but rather when I toured campus four years ago, it immediately felt like home. Four short years later, I now can say that it has become home. I would like to take a moment to thank those who have helped me achieve this award. To my mom and dad, <laughs> I figuratively and literally could not have done this without you. You encouraged me through my hardest assignments and classes and sacrificed so that I had nothing standing in the way of achieving my dreams. To my friends and family, thank you for the enormous amount of prayers and encouragement over the past four years. To my mentors, Michael Carey and Michaela Dent, the two internships you all provided created life-changing opportunities. And I not only learned more about who I was, but also more about who I wanted to become. And never forget, every day you have to test yourself. Lastly, to the University of Charleston. I address the university as its own entity because no matter the position one attains on campus, they each take part in shaping the next generation. The University of Charleston has become more than a college campus to me over the past four years. Rather now, it represents growth, education, and also a community. As I began writing this address, I reflected upon something we each would have in common, but it is simply impossible to summarize all of our college experiences into one three-minute speech. However, there is one question that kept coming to mind. This question is one that everyone in this room shares common ground upon, and it is simply put, what do you want to do when you grow up? The childhood Meredith wanted to be a fashionista and was rudely interrupted when that was, she was told that was not a real job title. High school Meredith wanted to be a financial advisor, and I'm sorry, Dr. Tenney, that simply will not be happening after today. <laughs> some of us have prepared and are still preparing to become doctors, some teachers, some lawyers, some educators, and some nurses, and others might remain unsure. And that's okay, too, because recently I heard this question rephrased. If I pose the question, who do you want to be when you grow up, can you identify the difference? You see, to do is to perform or complete a task, whereas to be is to occur or take place. So who do you want to be? When you think of this question, what word follows? Is it successful? Is it a millionaire? I'm sure neither, none of us would turn either of those options down. But to me, I want to be someone that sees people, not just physically looking upon them, but rather seeing them below their surface level and beyond what any race, ethnicity, or gender defines them as. I want to be a person that invests into other people and my community. I want to be inclusive. I want to be successful beyond a monetary standpoint, and I want to be a world changer. My intention for this speech is that you begin to think outside the box. As we leave our comfort zone of the University of Charleston and head to various communities around the globe, I encourage us to become more than our career, to extend our knowledge beyond what the classroom has taught us, to become the individuals we are destined to be, and may we not just do, but rather may we become outstanding individuals that represent the University of Charleston well and also accurately. And I know it's cliche, but may we not just change the world, but rather be the change we want to see in the world. Let us live out the mission statement of the University of Charleston and remain educated for a life of productive work, enlightened living, and community involvement. So as I conclude, today marks an ending, but it also marks a great beginning. May we all be grateful for the time spent at the University of Charleston. For the memories we have made together, may we forever hold them closely within us. The late nights, 
the pandemic, COVID season, the long and daunting lectures, the close and not so close games, the national championships, the warm days on the lawn, student organizations, and the friendships we have cultivated each have prepared us for a life beyond UC. Reflect on this quote in the years to come given by former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I believe in my dreams and aspirations, but I also believe in yours. Now it is time for you to believe in your own dreams and go achieve them. Once again, thank you, President Roth, for the opportunity to speak behind this podium where many outstanding individuals have preceded me. On behalf of the graduating class of 2022, no matter where life may take us, we are forever Golden Eagles. Thank you so much, Meredith. Now I know why the committee made, your, made that selection. So now I'd like to recognize our emeritus faculty, and I'd like to invite Professor Sandy Bowles and Joe Yonish to please stand. Hi, Sandy. There you go. Sandy Bowles is the longest serving faculty member in school history whose over 50 years of service began with establishing a nursing program at the University of Charleston and has ended as a member of the School of Pharmacy faculty. Not standing physically with us today, but I'm confident is standing in his living room, is Professor Joe Yonish, who was unable to join us in person today. So Joe dedicated over 20 years to the University of Charleston leading our choral activities, and serving on the School of Arts and Science faculty. How about a big round of applause for Dr. Bowles and for Joe Yonish. I also want to take this moment to recognize Carol Spradling, who retired this spring, after 30 years of extraordinary service as a university's registrar, and I'm sure that Carol is joining us remotely this morning as well. Finally, let us not forget our colleague, Jim Sircone, professor and department chair of computer science, who passed away this semester. Jim's memory and legacy will long endure. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Maggie Cook. Maggie has an incredible story that I will let her share with you. But in short, she is a 2002 graduate of UC who has achieved extraordinary successes in so many ways as an athlete, an entrepreneur, an author, a speaker, an executive coach, and a community advocate. It is truly an honor to have Maggie and her husband Owen back to campus on this very special occasion. And it is my great pleasure for us, on behalf of the University of Charleston faculty and the University of Charleston Board of Trustees, to, war to award Maggie with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. I now invite Maggie Cook and Board of Trustees Chairman Pat Graney to the podium for the conferral of her degree, after which we welcome Maggie to share a message with us. Maggie and Pat. Mr. President, on this occasion, on behalf of our faculty and board of trustee, it will also be our pleasure to confer upon Maggie Cook an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. Your impressive accomplishments in business, leadership, community engagement, along with your commitment to education and helping others are quite deserving of this recognition. 
My name is Magdalena de la Cruz Cucarcia. I am the founder of Maggie Salsa LLC. This is a company that I started with a gift of $800 when I was homeless and a company that sold a Campbell's Soup in 2015. When I first tasted Maggie Salsa, I was blown away. It was awesome product. I could tell it was fresh. I could tell it was made with quality ingredients and knew that it would be a great product for Walmart. I am from Mexico and this was life in an orphanage. And yes, these are my 68 brothers and sisters. Ever since I can remember, I mostly worked in construction, digging ditches, cutting trees, and gathering topsoil from the mountains. At times, we had no food for weeks, so some of my brothers and I resorted to hunting with our bare hands. We basically hunted at night using spotlights and nets to catch our prey. When I was about six years old, I started digging caves in sides of mountaintop canyons. These were my secret hiding places to rest. This was a way to try to escape, to cope with the things that I saw and lived. As a way out of the orphanage, I pursued basketball and got recruited in high school to play for the Mexican national team. But I broke my collarbone. My ticket out was months later when I got recruited to play basketball for the University of Charleston. And that's how I came here. I learned to play basketball really good by covering my eyes with the help of an orphan kid named Pancho. We found Pancho in a dumpster as a baby. He couldn't walk because he had spinal bifida and my job was to carry him everywhere I went. When I graduated college, I couldn't find a job and I became homeless. I ended up living in the streets and also in the woods in a nearby forest. But to be honest, I didn't even know that I was homeless because that's how I lived most of my life. In 2004, I started my salsa company with a gift of $800 when my friends entered me into a salsa contest. I won the contest and I had an aha moment. I started my business and it grew very, very fast. My products sold in 38 states to supermarkets like Walmarts, Whole Foods, Sam's Clubs, and many more companies carried my products. Shortly after my company was sold to Campbell's, I went back to Mexico and helped save 31 orphan children who were in grave danger. Some of them were victims of sex trafficking. We later were able to involve the federales in the military in the continuous pursuit of the safety of these kids. The best type of giving currency is not money. It is the willingness to give your life in the service of others. Never take for granted one single moment of your life. Change starts now. Good morning. <clears throat> have to wipe these tears off a little bit. Thank you um, for having me here. Um, I just want to start by saying that it's such a pleasure to be back in West Virginia, my alma mater. And um, I was where you are many years ago. And you're about to face the world. And you have all the tools. You just have to make the right steps and create the destiny that you're wanting. So to start, I just wanted to say, you know, some of the greatest, some of the greatest words that I've applied in my life and that have really helped me in business and in life, and I hope that you can take these words also with you, and they are these. If not this, 
than something better. When I was in Mexico and I got recruited to play ball for the Mexican national team and I broke my collarbone, I went up and visited the Mexico City, the team, and I was expecting for them to call me for three months and I went back to the orphanage. The three month, months passed and I didn't hear from them. And at that time, my caregivers pulled out a football, American football, and we started to play with my brothers. And one of my brothers threw a long pass and I caught it in the air and I flipped my body and I landed on my shoulder and I broke my collarbone. At that moment, I went to my father who was a doctor and he stretched my back, my shoulders back, and he said, your dreams are over. <clears throat> I was very disappointed and I was in pain because that was my ticket out. But in that moment, I decided, I chose to, to, to believe that there was something better for me. And I said these words, if not this, then something better. Six months later, we traveled the United States in a bus with all my 68 siblings, and we got invited to a picnic here in Charleston. And there was a basketball court at this picnic. My brothers and I ran out and started to play basketball. There happened to be the coach of the University of Charleston, and she saw me play. And she went to my father and told him, I want her to come here and play for me on a scholarship. That's why I'm here today. Now, I wouldn't be here today if I would have listened to him that my dreams were over. I wouldn't have played that day. But I really want you to think about these words because they can change the course of your life whenever you, whenever you have a challenge. If not this, then something better. I want to remind you something very powerful and very important that, that you already know, but, but you need a, I need to reinforce it to you that adversity is always going to be around, pandemic or not. It's always going to be around, and the way that I see it is, personally, that nothing is either good or bad. It's just, it just is. The thing is, what you choose, how you choose to see it that determines the actions that you take that change your destiny. One of my uh, biggest adversities that I had was when I first came here. You have to realize that I came from an orphanage in Mexico in the middle of the mountains of Michoacan, where there's no city, no nothing, and I came here to America, and I didn't know any English. So I really, really struggled with, with speech. But I was so fortunate to be at this institution where I had teachers that met with me after every single class and helped me learn English while teaching the class. And um, I had certainly had a, a problem with words. And I remember when I joined the soccer team, my coach was always very involved in making us uh, feel good and asking us how our, our week went. One morning at 5 a.m. before the soccer practice started, he came to me and he says, Maggie, what did you do last weekend? And I said, yeah, coach, I got laid by the riverbank. What I meant to say is, I laid out in the sun by the riverbank. <laughs> <laughs> so the learning point here is that make sure to, you should have seen his face. <laughs> make sure to look at people's reactions when I talk. <laughs> Today is a new beginning for you, and I want you to remember that every morning when you wake up, you have two choices. You either let life control you, or you take control of your life. So what does that look like? Up until this day, when you wake up, what do you do? Do you turn on the news? Do you look at your phone? What is it that you do? How is that determining your success and your future? In 2005, the Science, National Science Foundation came out with a research study, and they said that the average person thinks between 12 and 60,000 thoughts per day. And they said that out of those, 90% are negative, and 85% of their thoughts are the same exact repetitive thoughts as the day before. Think about that. Now, I want you to remember to remember that if you start each day with something that sets you up for success, I would start with purpose. Why are you here? I would start with your passion. Start with a ritual, something that gets you going. This will prime you for success. I'm sharing this with you today because it's something that I've used over and over since I was in the orphanage in Mexico. Mark Twain said that the two most important days of your life are, is the day that you were born 
and the day that you find out why. I want you to encourage you to always pursue your passion and be open to rediscovery because life is going to take you through a journey where it's not always going to be a straight shot. You're always, some things are going to happen. You're always going to be reevaluating your life and potentially using a rediscovery, which is very, very important for our evolution. You find meaning in life when you become a part of something greater. So think about that. When you're looking at your purpose and your why, whoever you work for, if you start your own business, you have to ask yourself, why am I here? Because you are not here in this time and space by accident. You have a purpose. And when you become something bigger than yourself, is when you truly begin to serve yourself, but also humanity. Never ever listen to those who tell you that you can't. My father once told me that I would never amount to anything, that I would die in prison and with AIDS, is exactly his words, because I came out to him as gay. He never recognized my success until a week before he passed. And this was before I sold my company with Garden Fresh to Campbell Soup for 231 million. And he wrote me a letter. He wrote me a letter and the letter said, Maggie, I'm so proud of you. You won't know what I mean, but you're from the old school, from the old generation, maybe 50 years back. The generation that had the work ethic, discipline, and most of all, a dream and willingness to labor and make that dream a reality. You are so caught up in what you're doing at this moment that you can't fathom will you be in five, in 15, in 25. Because of your willingness, it is going to be big. I hope that one day you might have children to carry on your tradition. America needs people like you and your values passed down if it is to survive. You are one big asset to everyone in your life. Sweetheart, I'm very proud of you. If I could phone him today, wherever he is, I would tell him Dad, thank you for everything that you did for me because it made me the strong woman that I am today. There's a famous quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer that says, if you can change the way that you look at things, the things that you look at change. So moving forward, I want you to look at every adversity, not as a challenge, but as an opportunity to grow, to expand, to become a better human being. Lastly, I really, truly want to encourage you to, to give back. One of my biggest realizations that I've ever had in life is this, that when you transition, in other words, when you die, you don't get to take anything with you. You only get to take what you did to empower yourself as a powerful spiritual being having a human experience and what you did to empower others. I just wanted to take the time and say thank you so much for having me here. I really encourage you to pursue your dreams, pursue your passions. Today is a new beginning for you, and I just want to thank you so much for having me here. Underneath your seats, we're gifting you a copy of my book, and I hope that you w wish you so many blessings from here on out on your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those inspirational words. Dr. Spezio, I think we have some work to do here. Check. You're right, Mr. President. Everything's in working order now, and we will proceed with the conferring of the degrees. Will the candidates for the associate degrees please stand? Let me rephrase. If you're receiving an associate's degree, please stand.
President Roth, I have the privilege of presenting to you the candidates for the Associate of Arts and Associate of Science degrees. These students have completed or are scheduled to complete the requirements for the respective degrees as approved by the faculty. I therefore request that you confer upon them the appropriate degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Charleston and by the State of West Virginia and upon the unanimous recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you the degree appropriate to your course of study with all rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Students, would you please turn your graduation tassel from the right side to the left side and be seated. <laughs> Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees please stand? President Roth, I have the privilege of presenting to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. These students have completed or are scheduled to complete the requirements for their respective degrees as approved by the faculty. I therefore request that you confer upon them the appropriate degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Charleston and by the State of West Virginia, and by the unanimous recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you the degree appropriate to your course of study with all rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Students, will you now please take your graduation tassel and move it from the right side to the left side and be seated. At this time, our University Grand Marshal, Professor Suzanne King, and Assistant Marshal, Dr. Mike Bailey, will lead the graduates to the stage where they'll receive congratulations from the President. Those who are graduating with honors today will be recognized as their names are read. Latin honors are designated for the students completing a bachelor's degree. Summa cum laude and highest honors indicate a GPA of 3.9 to 4.0. Magna cum laude and high honors indicate the second highest level of GPA from 3.75 to 3.89. And finally, cum laude and honors indicate the third highest level of GPA from 3.5 to 3.74. The following students are receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree from the School of Arts and Sciences. Chelsea Ray Adkins. Embla Anderson, summa cum laude. Logan Michael Bays. Duanye Thomas Bland. Kieran Leigh Bradley, summa cum laude. Desmond Paul Bradshaw. Joshua Arnell Brown. Liberty Summer Beth Goder. Jessica L. Harbert, summa cum laude.
Raul Hernandez, Jr. Aaliyah Grace Hodges. Shayer Khan. Anders Lene. Ryan Anthony McFarland, summa cum laude. Lamont McManus. Casey L. McNamara, cum laude. Trinity M. Polusio, cum laude. Palacio, cum laude. Jordan Nicole Phillips, magna cum laude. Jaleel Powell. Michelle Andrea Quesada. Lonnie L. Smith. Alexandra Spate. Meredith Spring Subtle, summa cum laude. Diego Villafani. Eli K. Watson, magnum cum laude. Courtney Faith Whittington. The following students are receiving a Bachelor of Science degree from the School of Arts and Sciences. Harini Balakrishna. Anthony Beckman. <laughs> Logan Renee Bossert, magna cum laude. <laughs> Alicia Davis. Tyler Patrick Dellerman, magna cum laude. Cassandra Ayana Terada Dump Dumps. Alan Brooke Gallimore, summa cum laude.
You have. What is it? Mahela Unalani. Hagley. Kaylee Hensley. Lakeland Kipps Kumare. Jasmine Mackenzie Lafferty, Magna Cum Laude. Regina Valerie Lopez Sasado, Kumare. <laughs> Megan Brooke Lowry, Magna Cum Laude. Brooke Elise McCormick, cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Brooke McCoy, cum laude. <laughs> Haley E. Meadows. Allison Grace Mills, cum laude. Kevin S. Rodriguez, cum laude. Cheryl Lee M. Perez Moran, cum laude. Brittany Prince. James George Raptus, Magnum Cum Laude. Zachary Thomas Blake Robertson. William B. Style, cum laude. Emily Taylor, summa cum laude. Colton Webb. Allison Youngworth, Magna Cum Laude. The following students are receiving a Bachelor of Science degree from the School of Business and Leadership. Nicole Catherine Balk. Braxton Tanner Bodoff. Lati Johanna Margo Bovi, summa cum laude. <laughs> Geraldine R. Boyd. <laughs> Navoid Bradford II. Destiny Armatha Brewer. <laughs> Daniel R. Brown. Callion. 
Paul Adrian Cagliari, cum laude. Terry Thomas Campbell. Willie Haywood Corey. Samuel Crony. Amy Elizabeth Cunningham, summa cum laude. Philip E. Dalton. Is it this one here? Ryan Lynn DeSplinter. Ali DeStefano, summa cum laude. Samuel David Dillon, summa cum laude. Thomas Drake. Barry D. Elliott. Tanaja Grant. Andrea L. Griffith, summa cum laude. Robin Haslich. Jordan Danielle Hayhow, Summa Cum Laude. Raymond Jackson. Joseph Morantz Jacobs. Brooke A. Jones. Michael A. Jolly. Adam Jason Jordan. Christopher Logan Knuckles. Elias Kostakis. Is it Timothy Kyer. <laughs> Kira Lobaldo, Magnum Cum Laude. Anthony S. Melby, Melby. Aaron Christopher Miller. Alexandria Maria Miachinsky.
Tyler Austin Patterson. Michael Dominic Perry, magnum cum laude. Michael S. Pinkerton III. Roberta Pomi, magnum cum laude. Lucas Alexander Reynolds. Angel Martinez. Stephen John Sanders. Robert Noah Schock, cum laude. <laughs> Mathilde Cl Cl Claire Marie Jade Simon, cum laude. <laughs> Eric Wayne Smith. Arthur Sewer. Alexander David Tonley. Blake A. Weitzel. Carson J. Williams. Robert Lee Wilson III, cum laude. Sean Matthew Woody, magnum cum laude. Sherry Catherine Yates. The following students are receiving an Associate of Arts degree from the School of Health Sciences. Bonnie Gabrielle Adkins. Tina S. Bailey, high honors. Elizabeth Ann Baldwin. Jessica Dawn Bartram. Kelsey Belcher. Janice Bess. Stephanie C. Boggs. Kaylee Morgan Bragg. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Bryant. <laughs> Faith Cole.
Amanda L. Collins. Casey Kozert. <laughs> Haley Chanel Cross. Morgan T. Day. Kelly Jo Dennis, honors. Dangerous. That's dangerous. Dangerous. Whitney Dingus. Carly Fields. Jamie Nicole Fisher. Jared Ryan Gerwig. Brian and Gottfried. Christian Nicole Goff. Kelsey Brooke Graves. Callie Hayes. Brooke Honaker. <laughs> Carrie Hudson. <laughs> Samara Jones. Catherine Elizabeth Walker. April Knapp. Chungma Lama. Lindsay Lester, honors. Is it? Felicia Metter. Patricia Clark. Carolyn Metz. Amy Mills, high honors. Megan Montalto. James Nance. Kaylin Parker. Kendall Parkins.
Veronica Pittman. <laughs> Ashley Price. <laughs> Connor Piles. Alicia Reynolds. Carly Rote. Megan Robinson. Ashton Rutherford. Amber Seaman. Keely Sims. Selena Skeens, honors. Rita Skidmore, honors. Alexandria Smith, honors. Jordan Spears, honors. <laughs> Riley Stowers. <laughs> Taylor Thomas. Jared Tupper. Kaz Turpin. Carlista Janan Ward. Shayna White. <laughs> Jessica Wills. Sarah Wiseman, high honors. Rosemary Wolski. I'll do my best. Laura Wachivich, high honors. Yeah. Ashley Yak. Jordan Young. <laughs> Kelly Young. <laughs> the following students are receiving an Associate of Science degree from the School of Health Sciences. Faith Apolloni. Margaret Bird. <laughs> Aaron.
Aaron Blevins. Mackenzie Carter. John Delnaya. Cecily Dufour. Kelsey Giso. <laughs> Hannah Green. <laughs> Allison Hamilton. Jennifer Johnston, honors. <laughs> Lindsay Miller, highest honors. Lakin Mitchum. Autumn Parks. Brock Smith. Courtney Whited, honors. The following students are receiving a Bachelor of Science degree from the School of Health Sciences. Alexa Atkins, magnum cum laude. Darian Ball. Stacy Bess. Brianna Bowman. Okay. Lachlan Bray. <laughs> Shayla Brown. Amna Bukhader, cum laude. <laughs> Sydney Champagne, cum laude. <laughs> Robin Childers. Cambry Currents, cum laude. <laughs> Micah Cutlip, cum laude. <laughs> Sierra Davis. Sydney Davis. <laughs> Mackenzie Dietz, magna cum laude. <laughs> Allison Donato, cum laude.
Austin Jerva. Alanya Ford. Riley Hetherington. Kiara Hill, magna cum laude. Eve Hine. Seth Hoffman, summa cum laude. Jessica Hughes. Cheyenne Jennings, magna cum laude. Michaela Lyberg. <laughs> Megan McCormick, cum laude. <laughs> Emily McPhail, cum laude. Christine Maurer, summa cum laude. Danielle Molex, cum laude. Madison Nickel. Kendra Painter. Lauren Pauly, cum laude. Denise Reese. Jessica Seaton, Magna Cum Laude. Manuel Silva, Summa Cum Laude. Mr. Smar. Michaela Stone. Marissa Elmore, summa cum laude. I hear you, Missy. Paul! Dana Summers, summa cum laude. Aaron Thomas, summa cum laude. <laughs> Megan William. <laughs> Savannah Wills. Caitlin Wilson, cum laude.
Will the graduates please rise? And now, will the University of Charleston faculty, staff, administration, and trustees please rise, along with the family and friends who have made this day possible. And everyone may now be seated as President Roth offers his closing comments. Well, of course, now that you're all comfortable, I'm going to ask you to please rise and remain standing. Direct your attention to the video screens and join the university singers in singing the university alma mater. Now you can be seated and stay comfortable. And here we are at the end of this glorious day, recognizing and congratulating the most recent graduates of the University of Charleston. Let me close by sharing that in my experience, there are three types of people. There are those who make things happen. There are those who let things happen. And then there are those who have no clue what happened. <laughs> University of Charleston Golden Eagles, go out and make great things happen. Please remain at your seats, and Dr. Spezio will give us instructions on how we will exit from today's ceremony. Thank you so much, Mr. President, and we will now be exiting from the arena, beginning with the stage party, and then the faculty, students, and guests. I'll ask you to please remain seated so we can all process out in a grand way. So I'll invite the stage party to begin.